Alex Bean with MMA Mania, and I'm here with Mike Perry, who returns to action December 2nd at BKFC 56. Mike, how are you? I'm great, bro. I just killed a two-hour workout at the boxing gym. I felt amazing. I was partnered up with some heavyweights. I was slick. I was strong. Uh, I feel great, man. I can't wait to fight. I'm so excited about it. You're less than a month away, man. How, how are you feeling uh, physically? How are you feeling mentally? Like, just how's it going? Um, I feel amazing everywhere. Uh, everything is amazing. You know, I'm kind of like, I'm cutting this weight, which in one side, I'm like, it's an opportunity to get to cut weight and, and see how ripped I can get and see how, you know, I can test myself and push myself and put the weight back on and then fight at the, at the, uh, you know, like go up and, but I do miss, I also think about that I fought at 185 and I'm like, you know, I kind of liked it fighting up there, uh, but I'm going back to 75, you know, we'll see what, I'm going to enjoy this one. Everything about it, no matter who is standing across from me, I think it's Eddie. Eddie seems like he, you know, he wants to push himself and challenge himself. And, um, you know, it's it's going to be rough for him, bro. When when the name Eddie Alvarez comes across your desk, what, like, what's your first reaction to, like, fighting a legend like that guy? Yeah. <laughs> easy work bro <laughs> easy work man I'm grateful I'm grateful for him I'm grateful that you know he can make people believe that he's done enough or he's pushed himself and you know he he could be a challenge or a force to be reckoned with and but I'm I'm here because I want to show that you know that I am the true force to be reckoned with, and I'm just going to shut him down and beat him up. And, uh, you know, they're going to have to really find me a challenge. When he says he's been in more street fights than you, do you, do you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. We all saw we all saw Jersey Shore, bro. We all saw Ronnie and Paulie D and Mike uh, out there in the Jersey Shore. And they wasn't really fighting out there, bro. Not like this. Not like that. So, you know, Eddie can listen. The point. The main point is, I am in no way a just fighter of a guy on the street that's not that's totally different bro i end those in like 10 seconds those are over quick and uh you know and i'm out of there so this one i'm gonna try to do that i guess i'm gonna try to get him up out of there and uh it's easy work bro and just you know a couple last things on your fight man just like you know it's for the king of violence title um, I mean, you talk to a lot of fighting fans, a lot of people would point to you as the king of violence. So you getting that title, man, like, I guess, what's it, what's it going to feel? I mean, obviously it's, I mean, it's, it's still a title, but like, I don't know, like having, having a title called the king of violence wrapped around your waist, like, is that going to feel cool? Heck yeah, bro. Heck yeah, I need that. I want that, bro. I want it more, bro. I want it more than all these motherfuckers. I killed it at the gym, dude. I was killing it. So swaggy, Rico Suave, Poppy Tulo, fucking swagging and dagging, bro. Just, I'm so ready for this. It's insane. I'm about to get a haircut. We're going to fly to the press conference tomorrow. Uh... Me and the coach gonna kick it for a bit, man. Go, go get a workout in in the mountains and uh, come back home and keep preparing and keep cutting weight and and every day is beautiful, man. I said. Um,
on my post yesterday, like every day is Christmas, bro. It really is like that because I'm so grateful. I'm always happy. Every bite of food I get, I I sacrifice for it and I, I put in the work, man. I, I just can't wait for my opportunity to show the world what I'm capable of. At the end of the day, this is December 2nd at BKFC 56. Do you finish Eddie Alvarez? Absolutely. Absolutely. Eddie is not. I am going to finish Eddie. I'm going to bust him up, dog. Awesome. Awesome. And then finally, I just want to ask you a couple of things outside of your uh, realm. Is there a possibility that a BKFC and Game Bread Bare Knuckle MMA kind of crossover or, or what's up? I'm not sure what we talking about with that, but the new platinum pit is where it's at. That shit's going to be fire, dog. Well, I, I, that, that was my second question. Talk about that, man. Like, how 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 exciting is that? Like, your own your own fucking promotion. Like, you so, so, something that like not everyone can do, bro. Not everyone can just be like, I want to start a promotion. Like, I guess why did you want to do that? And and kind of just talk about what what it is. I think. Uh... I've always wanted to, um, you know, have that go towards being a big, you know, I want to, I've said in the past that I'm the American Conor McGregor and we got a couple of us trying, Jake Paul's trying, but he's, he's not the experienced one here in this scenario. I am. So, you know, I'm trying to step up and I'm doing the toughest, one of the roughest, toughest sports you can possibly do. Whether it's MMA or not, it's fucking mean and nasty. So, and I am good at it and I enjoy it and I like it and I'm a sick bastard. Sick. And so, you know, I'm still so deep into fighting. I want to fight so bad and shit that I deserve to have some tough motherfuckers want to fight for me too because they know what the, what I'm talking about. They know damn well I'm in this shit to win this shit, bro, for sure. So, and I want to, I want to help out. I want to get back. I want to give people attention in in a style of fighting that everyone can enjoy because it's man versus man, or some women might fight in there, and you know we we go for broke. Kill or be killed, and we scrap it out, dude. And it's going to be amazing. The rules, everything. Everyone's going to love it. And then Dana, I'm Dana Black now. <laughs> When's the fir- when can everybody kind of expect the first event to come out? <laughs> Man, that would be a really good... Christmas present, uh, considering you know, a Christmas coming early when I knock out Eddie Alvarez, then uh, you know, because the team's working on it, uh, and they know I'm excited about it. I can't wait to get these things going, have my family out there to the events, and and we don't have to worry about fighting. Maybe people will be calling me out, who the heck knows, dude, but. I'm hoping at the beginning of the year we can have an idea of when we're fighting soon. Perfect. Talk about the Overdogs podcast, Camp I Media, my boy Mac Malley, Ice Bags. Like, I guess, how's it? You know, I, I don't think a lot of people would have like thought my pe- my pair would, would be a good podcaster, but you're fucking killing it, bro. Really, man. I appreciate that, yeah. bro. Thank you. Um, Sometimes it makes me a little nervous. I'm like, damn, I'm about to go do this show. Or like, you know, I I got to, it's a little bit more time on my schedule that I'm focusing on things. Sometimes I get trapped in my phone and I'm like, ah, I'm going to throw this thing somewhere. And, but we need to, you know, I'm trying to do all the parts and, and keep my cool at the same time. And, um, you know, just enjoy my transitioning into, 
you know, bigger and better things in the sport of combat. P people, I've earned something, but I'm not done earning. And that's what people give me my respect for. And because um, I'm putting in the work, dude, and it's going to show on my performance. That's number one on top of my list. And everything else is a blessing, you know, that I want to do good at. I want to do great at all of it. Awesome. And then finally, last before I let you go, thank you again for your time, man. Uh, I want I want your thoughts on Francis Ngannou. Um, you know, obviously you left the UFC to go out on your own. Um, you know, and everybody was talking shit about Francis, and he he goes out there and beats Tyson Fury. What were your thoughts on um Francis Ngannou's performance and just the whole big picture at, at whole? Well, he didn't win. <laughs> They said that Tyson won. A lot of people say it was robbery, but that seems like a lot of fights. So, right. you know, shout out to both of them because Tyson, we know, is tough. Just because Francis didn't have boxing matches, we know damn well Francis is scary, okay? Coming at you with the big hits. So Tyson survived it. And he jabbed him up, I guess. And, uh, you know, let me get in the boxing ring with somebody, you know. But I'm going to. And I'm going to do a bare knuckle. And you can ask any boxer, do they want to do that shit with me? And they don't want this. As a boxing fan like yourself, you know, there was some boxing snobs saying that Tyson Fury beat Francis because of his he was more technical and more clean. You know, you've watched you watched boxing for a long time. Like what what were your thoughts on that? Like did like did Tyson beat Ty, did Tyson beat Francis in a quote unquote boxing match or 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 was it just, you know, being in Saudi Arabia they gave him the fight because they didn't want Francis to win. You know, um Neither one of them finished each other. You can't leave it up to the judges, period, at the end of the day. Those guys both have power. They both finish people. They both know that. And they both have more people that they can fight. Like, now we want to see Francis Ngannou versus Deontay Wilder. The two scariest punchers on the planet, probably. Uh, you know, it's good that a dog is on top, though. Tyson... You know, but if it was in a cage, if it was ground and pound, if it was kicks, you know, I, I'm i not doing the kicking shit no more. I don't have to. I don't care either. But I go to the MMA gym. Sometimes these guys do kick me and stuff. I still get that stuff in. I still grapple a little bit, uh, even grappling in the clinch and working for strikes. You know, it's a thing in boxing. So I can fight. Don't get it twisted. I can fucking fight. I've been in the UFC, fought 15 times. Guys been there fucking longer than me, don't have those many fights. Um, you know, and I moved on to boxing and bare knuckle at that, you know. So let's go. Uh, all of it. I want all the smoke. I love smoke. I'm about to go smoke. It's great. Last one. You 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 get past Eddie Alvarez December. Next next year. Who taking Conor McGregor out of, out of the equation, right? Logan Paul, Jake Paul, Dylan Dennis, Jorge, Anthony Pettis, Anderson Silva. You get to fight one of these dudes. You call them out, and, you, and you're fighting them next year. Who is it? Darren Till. Ooh! That's another thing, too, right? Like, I'm going down to 175. I talked about this. And then Darren Till's sitting there, he's walking around. He looked to what 213, 220, maybe. I don't know. In between there. Um, I gotta build up, I gotta eat, I gotta put some muscle and weight on, I lift some weights, uh, so I could go up and wait. We can meet at 185. I you know, I'm sure he could fight at 185. He used to fight 70, and then he went up to 85, he got fat. So now, you know, he's looking strong. He's lifting weights and shit. That's the fight. Um, so let me beat Eddie. And then 
after an intense weight cut, my body should be so hungry. I could be bigger than ever and eat so much. So I'm excited uh, to evolve and develop. Do you see do you see yourself boxing Darren Till or do you think Darren Till will uh go in your own with with uh, bare knuckle? Darren already said no to bare knuckle. We we have an idea and a plan for how we're going to fight him and you know it would be nice to get it in the even possibly the platinum pit. I have some look, I haven't fought in the pit either, right? And I have some like concerns about the size of the pit, uh, when you're walking up the hill, how close, you know, uh, how far away you could be, you know, the in and out, when you're going to hit your ankle on the that slant. I don't know how it's all going to be. So we'll figure it out together at the same time while we're punching each other in the face. And I'm going to win that fight, man. I'm going to be, I'm a little dog, you know. You, you can call me little, but I'm going to fucking snatch skin off your face love it mike thank you so much for your time man i really appreciate thanks it. bro i really um uh you know if you want to plug your pl plug your social media plug any sponsors you might have you want to thank anybody tell everybody when you're fighting the floor is yours man you guys know what's up bro overdogs podcast campfire media platinum mike perry on instagram platinum perry on twitter and uh you know shout out market cypher Shout out Kim Pie Pandas. Um, shout out First Round Management. And uh, shout out to the BKFC, baby. Number one.